All right, so we're going to talk about Dishtal, also known as neoplasticism, literally means the style in Dutch. It was an artistic movement that was centered in Holland that began in 1917 and lasted until roughly 1931. And as you'll be able to see from this video, it was both an architectural movement and an avant-garde visual art movement. And it was founded by a group of several artists and architects, but typically the most famous artist that we associate with de Stahl was Piet Mondrian, and also Theo van Duisburg. These two artists really typified um, what these de Stahl paintings look like, and when we see them today, um, typically these works are by one of these two artists. And to be fair, I mentioned Duisburg because I, some of his paintings are in this video, but to be honest, really the only de Stahl artist that people have ever heard of, if they've heard of any at all, is Mondrian. So, what was de Stahl all about? Well, roughly, it was a utopian uh, perception of spiritual harmony. That was the way that Mondrian described it. It was an advocation of pure abstraction. These paintings are purely abstract. But the big point of emphasis that separated this from other abstract movements like Cubism or Abstract Expressionism is that there is this uh, kind of universalized reduction to just the essentials of form and color. So these paintings are very simple. They are simple visual compositions consisting primarily of just vertical and horizontal lines, basic shapes like squares or rectangles, and primary colors in addition to black and white. So these Gestahl artists were a lot more concerned with the nature of form and color themselves than they were with the appearance of the world around them. In fact, Mondrian himself believed that the three-dimensional world was deceptive in a way, and that Gestahl aimed at getting down to the, the essence of meaning within the world, the world on its most simplest, basic levels. That's why there's such an emphasis here on just the primary colors, black, white, simple shapes. A lot of people look at these paintings and, you know, it's kind of the stereotype, oh, well, I could do that, you know, that's not art. And, well, you know, you're probably right, you probably could do this. But the point is, that that's the whole purpose of the painting, is to make it as simple as possible so that the artist is capable of expressing just those basic attributes of the world, which the de Stahl artists believed most accurately represented the true nature of reality itself, as opposed to what our eyes told us was the nature of reality. So... They painted these asymmetrical paintings where there was a lot of opposition, what we, they would call positive and negative emphasis on different colors and lines and shapes. And this, this fascination with shapes was something that was borrowed from Cubism. And like I said, de Stahl was an abstract movement of art. It had a lot of, in common with other uh, kind of sub-movements of abstract art, except de Stahl was by far the most reductionist of the abstract movements. One interesting thing is that the artists did not frame their paintings. The Stahl paintings are never framed because there was this belief that these paintings were supposed to be continuous extensions of the world. They, wouldn't, they weren't supposed to be, you know, sequestered from their atmosphere. They were supposed to be an intimate part of that. After all, these artists believed that this is what the true nature of reality was, that we needed to put more emphasis on what red means, what a straight line means, what a square means. So yeah, I mean, it seems kind of weird to us, but it's an avant-garde art movement. It's bound to be a little bit weird. And as always, if you like art as much as I do, please, please, don't forget to subscribe. And in return, you'll get a new movie every week to help you continue developing your appreciation of art. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching.